Okay, this is a quick range report video on my Taurus Thunderbolt rifle in 45 long Colt, or 45 Colt rather. And the only thing I have to say about this is that I like it very much. So it's not the only thing I have to say about it. About the only negative that I have to say about this is the wide buckhorn sight. I'll come forward and show you. Let's see if I can slide this down through here. Alright, you can see the buckhorn sight there. And that to me was the least favorable part of this. Um, since it's wide, I'd imagine that the purpose of it being so wide is for fast target acquisition. And so your, your sighting picture is good, but it's a little imprecise since the opening in the buckhorn is so wide compared to the front post. Sight. Let me just aim it at you guys for a second there. Alright, and it is unloaded. There's nothing in there. Uh, but overall, it performed flawlessly. I didn't have any failures to feed or failures to extract. The one thing that is kind of different about this from some of the other rifles that I've used is the top eject. So all the cartridges eject from the top upward and they have a tendency to land on your head or in this case uh, the bill of my baseball cap. That's a minor nuisance but it really doesn't detract from the quality and the effectiveness of this particular rifle. So about all I can do is give this thumbs up. All I can do is give this thumbs up and hope to have another chance to shoot it real soon. It's very quick and as I said, no failures to extract, or failures to feed, or failures to eject. So it did what it had to do. The trigger pull is not that hard. I don't want to dry fire it too often. I just did that to give a demonstration. But overall, as I said before, and I will continue to say, it is a good shooting piece. And I hope to have an opportunity to do so once again real soon. And this is the Taurus Thunderbolt 45 Colt rifle. Overall length is 46 inches. And the barrel is 26 inches. It holds 13 cartridges in the tube. Plus one in the pipe. So you can shoot for a pretty good while and you will hit your target and I'll show a couple of the targets that I use granted the range was relatively short and this was the first time I actually used it so I guess this is probably the first time I've actually shot through a buckhorn sight that's actually this wide before because most of the other buckhorns are um, somewhat narrower I guess so I'm not sure if they would be true buckhorns, but at least you uh, actually have um, probably not as quick sighting it. Um, but you can actually line it up more precisely than with this. There's just, I'm not sure if you would consider it minutes of angle from one side to the other. But I would, yeah, yeah I would say definitely minutes of angle if you actually... Um, 
have a bias toward the left or right rear part of the rear sight. So the width between the uh, horns looks like about, mm, I'll have to measure it, but just eyeballing it, it looks to be about 3 eighths of an inch. So that's pretty wide. Um, and that will definitely affect your accuracy, um, particularly if you're not sure exactly how to hold it, you know, with respect to bias to one side or the other. You try to line it up in the middle, but, um, you know, you just have a little bit of waver and it can make a great deal of difference. And the further you shoot, of course, the uh, more off that's going to be. But I'm not sure exactly. I have to look up to see exactly what the purpose of this was, long range shooting, medium or short range. Uh, because, as I said, you can acquire your sights quite quickly, but there's just going to be a lot of uh, play, we'll call it, in the actual sighting in. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll show a couple of my targets that I did today.